Okay guys, we are live. Right guys? So what we're gonna do very simply is this. While we wait for people to stream in, I'm actually gonna play y'all a video real quick. I'm gonna play y'all a video really quickly. And I want y'all to watch this video. I teach about creating and generating wealth. I truly, truly believe that the greatest wealth strategy in the planet is giving. And to me, giving part two is actually to go down to these families, to actually visit them, to actually know what these people are actually going through. I have been here. I've been in this particular block a couple of times. I got to know Cindy through Where's Wally's Movement. What Where's Wally's Movement does is they actually find for all these uh, families which have fallen in between the cracks, who need, really need support. She has a nine-month-old daughter. Cindy is at home and she's taking care of the kid full-time, so they have literally zero income right now. Ah, I'm in the kitchen. It's because of the pandemic. 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 It's because I really truly enjoy playing with her. Uh, she's such a darling, she's so cute, right? And I, I really truly enjoy uh, interacting with people uh, like, and just talking to them and actually finding out and learning of their stories. So Auntie Salma is 73 years old. You know, I, I went to her house. I when, when they opened the door, I was in shock, right? Because we opened the door and she was like sitting on the floor. She was lying on the floor. And here's the thing, she can't stand up because of diabetes. They had to cut off uh, her toes. And she doesn't sleep at the bed because it's too hot, right? So I saw her sleeping at the gate. Well, her husband's an Indian guy, right? So I came in and then I'm also Indian. My husband long time, died 10 years already. Lah. Also diabetes. Yalah, husband no ah, problem lah. Asbun ada, sama asbun boleh cakap-cakap. Asbun tak ada, tengok wah satu orang macam. Asbun die two year ready ah, I cannot work. I also diabetes. Gaman tolong mak cik, uh, 750, 290. Tak ada cukup lah. Mak cik beli tu, beli insulin, satu kotak, mendekat 50 lah. Bocok kau lah. Habis tak, saya tak mau injek, dia cakap tak boleh. You must do injection. Nanti dia kencing, very high. I last time I say tisu, you know. I got this, I'm a tissue. Ah. I got people, many give me money. I, I don't want money. I said, this one tissue, ah. three, one dollar. Then, two months, I not sell tissue already. Lah. Sakit, no? Then, I eat a little bit, a little bit. Lah. Why I don't want to eat? Makan tato tose ke cukup. Sekarang tak boleh makan banyak. One enough. Sakit orang tak tahu lah. Allah tahu lah. Tak ada, tak ada. Aku tak mau ingat lah. I omen lady, I tak mau ingat apa-apa lah. Never mind lah. They don't have. Semua hair ada okey lah. Come bro, let's install the curtain bro. Oh, look at this, look at this, look at this, new curtains. 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right, so again, when we have these backup curtains, it'll help to reduce the warmth so she can sleep better. Kali bagus, ah? Nice, tak panas. Ah, panas, correct, correct, correct. Okay. Can I? Ah, baik. Ah, bagus, Anak pun tak boleh masuk. Tak boleh masuk, ah? Semua pun all she really truly wanted was conversation and to have somebody to be there. I felt like a son. <laughs> I felt like she was, uh, okay, like, I felt like she was like my grandma. Uh, it was so easy to converse with her. She was so loving. Very, very simple hope is that she doesn't have to suffer financially. I don't want any of these people to actually have to worry about that. All right, and again, if that financial stress is off, then I think things can be a little, a little bit easier. Yeah, so very, very simply, you know, if you want to join me in my giving trips, uh, I think there's a link down below. You can actually put your, your details down. And I, my vision is to have this happening in every country, every city in the world, right? This is not just a Singapore thing. Guys, we are one human race. You know, absolutely amazing stuff, huh? Hey guys, if you all enjoyed that, smash the love button, my friends. Smash the love button. Let me see. Let me see the love button flow. Let me see the love. Yo! Right, what we need is more love in the world, right? And that's what Team Rash is about. I, my name is Rash Vin, and my company, right? Basically, what does Team Rash mean? Let me just share with you all. For those of you all who are new to this entire thing, Team Rash. Rash very simply stands for teacher. All right, and I truly, truly believe that education is the greatest equalizer in the world. You know, I, you know, right now in this world, people talk about a wealth gap, right? But I truly believe there's just an information gap, and the world needs more teachers. You, you see, my friends, every one of you is a teacher in one way or another. If you are, if you have a child, for example, you're a teacher to your children. If you Again, all of us are teachers to our colleagues, to everybody around us. If you resonate with being a teacher, then you're part of Team Rash. Yo, Team Rash. If you're part of Team Rash, let me see the Team Rash flow. Let me see in the comment section right now, Team Rash. All right. So again, Rash very simply stands for that. That's um, basically, check it out. It's Hebrew. All right. That's what it is. And that's what Team Rash stands for. And hey, right now we need more teachers, more teachers who are giving, more teachers who are loving. And uh, that's what we stand for, love and to actually just give, all right? That's what basically Team Rash is. And uh, you know, who are we? We are very, very simply this. We, are, we help investors create extreme wealth during a time of unprecedented opportunity. As you know, right now, with the entire COVID going on, you know, hey, there's a lot of opportunities and we help investors create extreme wealth in these times. You want to check us out? You can go to our website, www.teamrash.com. You can get all the information that you want on teamrash.com. That's who we are. Check us out if you want to. And let me just share with you all, right, a little bit. So this is our code of honor. Our code of honor very simply is this. Number one, our code of honor is this. God is our CEO. He's the source of all our blessings. I stands for impossible is nothing through Him. All things are possible. V stands for visionary leaders. We are visionary leaders. That's what I believe. E stands for excellence. We believe in excellence in everything that we do. R stands for results focus. We lead by example. And S, my friend, stands for service and we serve with all our heart. And if you can actually tell, that's for, that stands for givers. And very simply, my friends, this is our code of honor. This is what we live by. This is what I live by. And God, my friends, is my CEO. And my vision very simply is to create the largest, largest community of givers all over the world. And that's my vision. That's our company's vision. And again, it's always about standing out. Right? Let's create the largest community of givers in the world. And that's my vision, my friends. And I'm committed to achieving this vision. So I want to share with you all about Giving Wednesday. So we have this um, we have this thing called Giving Wednesdays and this happens on Giving Wednesdays. Guys, how many of you all love Giving Wednesdays? If you love Giving Wednesdays, type in love it. If you love Giving Wednesdays, type in love it. Let me see the love it flow. Right? Type in love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. If you love Giving Wednesdays, let me see some loves, <clears throat> my friends. Let me see some loves. Giving Wednesdays. I'm going to tell you two stories. This Wednesday, right, we did a few things. This Wednesday, uh, this past week, right, I want to share with you all two stories. The first story is this. 
the first story is hey you know we actually found this family right this single mother uh, who actually uh, lost the home her entire home got burned down and she lost the entire home and all her belongings to a fire it was crazy to actually watch right so she actually had a plug which was too plugged in electricity sparked and what happened was you know it caught on to some essential oils and the entire house just burned down this was the actual picture it was very very scary and she has three kids and you know she you know right now she isn't employed and she lost every single thing you see we went to a place and we actually asked her how can we actually help you and her reply was actually there was an, there's another family who has a house that's burned down maybe you can help her guys can you imagine that was her reply right guys you know it made my heart i was like wow she lost everything and the only thing she could think about was helping somebody else and i was like wow and so she asked me right so i asked her hey look right is there anything i can actually help you with and she said my only fear is that i don't have a job currently right now right and hey guess what i run a miracle working company my friends we make miracles come through that's what we do and you know i immediately created a job for her she was absolutely amazing it was complete fit you know she's the head of customer service in previous companies and that's what we need and hey we gave her an opportunity to work with team rash to give us some income as well so hey boom one life change and that's what team rash does right that's what we do we create miracles for people all around us every single day right so that's basically what it is so i did and most importantly right i brought i bring my team along right whenever i can i bring my team along and you know i brought uh lenny and angel i love these two ladies uh angel is actually lenny's daughter and we brought her along on these giving trips right and you know she's only in sec one sec one right but hey you know i truly truly believe that the kids need to learn about giving as well they need to come along on these trips and hey if the kids can learn about giving hey why not right so angel is from our very very first batch of little investors club and that's what it is right so little investor angel i'm so proud of you and hey every single day these these kids they learn right and lenny was the first time actually following us as well so lenny angel i love you guys right let's go on more giving trips together right guys how many of you would love to go on giving trips together with me type in me right type in me if you love to go on giving trips right type in me if you love to go on giving trips right and let me share with you one more story my friends let me share with you one more story okay this one crazy story crazy crazy story so let me share with you all this one story okay so what happened in was this in the month of uh in the month of um june okay in the month of june after june ended what happened was this let me share with you this very very interesting story right so what happened in june was um you know i was ready to actually give and actually um bless a family in malaysia okay i was actually ready to bless and you know help a family in malaysia that's what i was actually ready to do you know, no no i was ready to actually give money into into some to a hospital in malaysia right so i actually you know had quite a bit of money and i wanted to actually give to malaysia and you know i talked to the doctor and stuff like that and he said oh you're so generous thank you very much and i said okay cool right let me know account transfer to uh but guess what after one day after one week after two weeks after three weeks i got no response i was like oh crazy man i want to transfer money also cannot transfer money i was like wow interesting <laughs> right but hey guess what my friends um it was very very interesting why because just two days ago what happened was this just two days ago um somebody reached out to me on facebook and it was a 27 year old boy and what happened to 27 year old boy was that he actually got into a very very serious accident and he had a major brain injury and he's been he's been in coma for two months they come from a very very low income background so he's still in coma he still hasn't come he still hasn't come come awake yet the doctor said it'll take some time but he's young so it maybe he'll pull through but you know every single month the bills are crazy and it's like he has to be in the hospital for long term because he needs to learn how to move his hands his legs everything all over again can you imagine right so it's pretty crazy huh and interestingly he's from the same hospital and i asked how much do you need and it was exactly the amount that i wanted to give see god works in mysterious ways he was holding off the entire thing i wanted to give for this one boy 
God bless his soul. I hope he gets well very, very soon. But that's what we do, my friends. We make miracles come through. And God works mightily through my company. All right. So again, um, you know, if you would love to, I will maybe post this story on the Get Cash with Rash group and stuff like that. If you love to help out. Guys, how many of you love to help out? Right, type in, you know, if you love to help out, type in me. I want to see, right, especially from, from Malaysia, right, this young man, right, 27 years old. I can share with you all some pictures, man. It's crazy, right? So today we went to do some verification, you know, for real, uh, you know, so we're going to basically handle his bills with the hospital. We're going to settle all that stuff. One more life changed and every day we try to change lives, all right? So that's basically what we're doing. We're helping out families every single day all over the world, all right? So let's be a blessing. Again, why? Because we are blessed to be a blessing. Guys, type in blessed to be a blessing if you all believe that, all right? Type in blessed to be a blessing, all right? <clears throat> So that's another story of Giving Wednesday and how we're going to actually change another family's life. And hey, you know, all glory goes to God. And, you know, again, I thank God that, you know, through, through my company, we can change people's lives on a daily basis. All right. So again, if you want to be, you know, alerted on anything that we do, join us on Telegram, t.me forward slash get cash with Rash. That's where all of it goes down. You literally... Um, all of it, right? I, I basically am updating everything on the Telegram group. So please join us there on our Telegram group, t.me forward slash get cash with Rash. Right? So today we have Sean Sia and Sean Sia is an amazing guy. Today we're going to tell a story, an untold story, how one man had to risk it all to become one of Asia's top renowned investment experts. Oh man, today's going to be exciting. Sean is a very, very, very special brother he is a friend he is a mentor he was the guy who changed my life and i'm so excited to have him as a guest today because his stories are going to inspire you his stories are going to move you his stories are going to you know cause you to want to take action in your lives guys how many of you are like, excited type in excited if you're excited if you're excited for sean type in excited my friends let me see i want to see sean I want to see all of y'all type in excited. Type in and smash the love button, my friends. For Sean Sia. For Sean Sia. For Sean Sia. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely amazing. All right. So without further ado, my friends, what I'm going to do right now is this. I'm going to invite Sean himself to come up. And uh, hey, we're going to have an amazing conversation. And my friends, wait, before we begin, very, very important. Before we begin, super sorry, sorry. Before we begin, I want to share something. Before we begin, sorry. Uh, let me share something very, very, very important. Okay, let me share something very important. And the thing which is very important is this. Hey, my friends, um, throughout this entire thing, I want to give you all a hashtag giveaway. Take a picture of me and Sean. Share your best lessons on Facebook or Instagram. Tag me on Instagram, on, you know, on Facebook. You know, this is me on Facebook and tag me on Instagram or Facebook. And what I'll do is five people win a cash prize. All right. So again, this morning, uh, what I did was I actually offered a cash prize to people actually share this post as well. And let me share the 10 people who are going to win. These are the names. If your name is called out, good for you. Congratulations. The first person is Jackie Yup. Number one, you win a cash prize. Elvin Poir, Nelda Drea, Terence E, Angela Bok, Wen Lee, Isabella Chan, Sri Ram, Hope Plessison, and Ryan Reeves. Ten of y'all actually win a cash prize if your name was read out. Congratulations. You win a cash prize from Team Rash. Right, so again, we'll give another five people a cash prize, and very simply, all you need to do is just share best lessons. That's it, guys. How many of y'all are in it to win it? Type in in it to win it. Let me see. Type in in it to win it if you're ready to win this cash prize. All right, so again, very, very simple. Take a picture of me and Sean, all right, as we have the conversation. Share your best lessons, and you have a chance to win. All right, so why not? Right, why not? In it to win it. So let's go, my friends. Uh, so let's bring on Sean. Yeah, Sean. Please come on board. Let's have a great conversation, my friend. Hi, guys. Hi, hi, Rash. Hi, everybody. Hey, guys. Hi, Sean. How are you? Hey, great, great, great. You know, when I look at your title, Karai, the untold story of how a man risk it all, wow, it sounds super exciting. I'm not too sure whether my story is ex as exciting as you made it to be, you know. Uh, well, let's, let's, let's see. I, I didn't really prepare much. I'm not sure well, where we are going with this, but let's go ahead and uh, let's share with everyone who is here this evening hey man sean dude i'm so excited to have you i think a lot of people love you as well sean make sure you share on your page bro <laughs> on my page cool 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 
I wish you share your page. People need to know your story as well. Absolutely, 100%. Dude, um, Sean, so again, bro, you know, a lot of people know you as this amazing guy, this investing genius, guy who travel all around the world, CEO of, you know, companies, listed companies. You've done so much right. in your life at such a young age. Brother, dude. Young age, you, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, very young one, bro, right? Me, you're millions before you turn 30, all that right. stuff. Right. Hey, people also know you as you know my first investing mentor, right? So people see all the glory, but they don't know the story, man. So can you bring us back? When do you start? How do you start this entire journey? And what sparked you to actually um, take this journey to become an investor? Well, uh, actually, my, my 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 story. Okay, I, I want to I want to I want to be very frank and upfront because I don't remember exactly the chronological order, but I remember the point where I became very motivated to want to create an income other than working. So I was a military officer and, hey, by the way, I, I want to say this, I say it over and over again, I respect my profession a lot. I, I did, I'm not one of those who hate my job. I really do like my job. I, I know a lot of people, they are disgruntled with their job, but I have very good bosses. So a few things happened. The first thing that actually triggered was when I started my own family. So I, I, I guess uh, I never have really a huge ambition for myself. I'm just someone who is happy-go-lucky. I love to... I love adventures. I love to have fun. I never had a big dream. Okay, even even I, I think along the way, I, I think Rash should know about me now. I, I love adventures, but not really a big dream. But when I got married, right, I, I thought differently already. All, all along, I was playing and having fun really for myself. Even in the military, I'm having a lot of fun. So when I got married, right, that's where uh, when I look at my beautiful wife, you know, I spend a lot of time at work. By 5 a.m., 6 a.m., I'll be at work. And by 12 midnight, I'll be, uh, I'll be back uh, after 12 midnight. Uh, the, the, the military didn't force me to do that. <laughs> Nobody ill-treated me. I wanted to do well in my job. I wanted to do well in my career and I do enjoy my job. But I started thinking, I, I'm, I'm thinking like if I'm going to be a very good professional uh, uh, military officer and I need to spend so much time, then what about my family? Because I spend more time with my soldiers than with my, with my family. And I'm thinking, wow, when my, when my son grew up and things like that, right, well, would they even like know who I am? Because my, my, my dad was a military officer and... Uh, Frankly, frankly, when I was a boy, I, I don't see much of him, uh, but he, he does take time to actually talk to me and uh, things, things like that. But, but I, I, I wanted more, more for my family. That's where, that's, where, that's where it got triggered. So a few things, a few things happened. So I got triggered and became interested. Like, are there any choices? How, how many of you like, love to spend more time with your family, your loved ones? You can talk about your family as well. Uh, type family, okay? And, and, and that's where uh, I actually started wanting to find out more about passive incomes and things like that. So this is one trigger point. So a few things happened. A second trigger point was actually my boss. Uh, her name is called Song B. I, I, think, I think you know, you know her. She, she's, she, I mean, she was in the same like, training program as you, right? Asia Works. So, so she was my boss. Huh? One day she passed me a book and the book is called Creating Wealth by, by Robert G. Allen. When she passed me the book, I was so confused. You know? It's like, hey, I, 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 I'm a military officer. I thought when you pass me a book, it should be like uh, Sun Tzu out of work, right? So, so she asked me to go and read it. And after I read it, it talks about passive income, talks about investing. I scratch my head, you know, it's like, what, what is this boss doing? But, but after that, years later, I mean, I'm still in contact with her. And I realized that she saw something in me that she felt that I should, I should, actually, leave, I should actually do something else. So, so it was a very interesting boss. I don't know about whether you guys have bosses like that. My, my bosses treated me so well, you know. They care for me beyond my job. They see a certain potential in me and they, and they say, hey, maybe, maybe you should not be in this job. So, so I think I think Rash also knows that for, for, for me, right, whenever my team member wants to go and set up their own company and all that, I, I actually feel excited for them. Maybe, maybe it started right from the time where my boss actually empowered me. So, so second trigger point, I don't know which one came first. First, uh, I'm so sorry. Uh. Then the last one was actually uh, one of my friends. His name is called Sufyan. I never believed in investing because, because in university I I studied I studied business, I studied finance. And my professor told me that it better don't invest. So when someone with authority tell me don't invest, right? I went to do my homework. I realized a lot of investors don't make money. So I never believe you can make money in investing. I always thought it's fluff. Until a friend of mine called Sufyan, he was my colleague. He showed us his uh, investment account and he was like quarter million dollars. He was only early 20s. And I was, I was amazed. I asked him, how do you invest? Huh? He said, oh, must read this newspaper, must read that newspaper. And then after that, he disappeared. I think he became financially free, go and do his own things. Huh? So I never got a chance to learn how to invest. But that got me started. And, and really, when I think about my family, I, I feel like, wow, I really want to have more time with them. I wanted time freedom. I, I, I'm not after the money. I'm not after the money. I wanted time. How many of you, you want time? You want time for yourself. You want time for your family. Please type time. I want time to do the things that uh, maybe other than work. I do enjoy my work, but I want time for other things. That's where, 
many many trigger points but this was like one of the few key things la. yep then i started investing and uh start to burn a lot of money la. lost a lot of money and and start to learn here and there yep this this was the first few first few things yep i'm not i'm not sure whether this is going where you 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 want no no oh. no, no. It's again again i want to share with you sean you know for for those of you all for those of you all who don't know uh like you know um i always want to become a military officer right <laughs> like yeah, you're it's, it's, very interesting. it's very interesting like when i go to sean's house and i see his wedding photo i was like bro that's the oh. life i want and that's the life i wanted you know do, guys do you remember when you, do you remember when you told me this I, I still remember very clearly when you told me this you know it when was we were man. attending a course uh jerry roberts course the book mm -hmm. publishing course we were yep. sitting down beside the mrt i think we bought something from 7 11 we sit down there because there's no, no no place to sit and then you told me about your story about you wanting to become a military officer and how you how you didn't manage like, because of your medical condition well i i was i was very touched and and i've seen you always helping so many people because of that oh this 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 amazing also yeah dude you know like for me uh, the reason why i wanted to be a military officer was because i wanted a you know a military wedding right i thought it was so cool right to wear the, cool, the yeah. number one uniform you know what i'm talking about right with the sword of honor you had all of that right bro yeah 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 we we had the sword bearers like right the sword bearers i i, I actually <laughs> broke broke the military law supposed to have only four pairs i had like 20 pairs like, because wow. because i i i have a lot of good friends and a lot of them all came and become my uh sword bearer it was it was wonderful yeah wow absolutely amazing man absolutely crazy dude but but share with us the story man so again when you started out investing right like right. how did you start out what was the initial the 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 whole journey of investing you know do you start out what what capital do you start out with and what methodology you use initially i i remember very clearly now so i went to attend a few previews now you, you know like like investing previews right but back then there wasn't it was more like trading I, the first preview i attended it was at a hotel room i can't quite remember the preview what was it like but the, I attended the second preview. I, I remember something, you know, I, I, I saw Adam Koo's uh, um, newspaper article. I called him and said, hey, uh, how much to sign up for the program? Uh? Then they keep saying, hey, you must come for the talk. Uh. You come for the talk, they will be, I will tell you the price. Uh. They don't tell me the price. Uh. I want to sign up already, you know, but they just don't tell me. So I, so I said, ah, never mind, I flipped the newspaper. I saw another article. I, I, I will not mention that person's name uh, because he's no longer teaching. And uh, I didn't benefit a lot from it, but I didn't want to put, put the person down because I don't think it's his fault. So I went to the other person's uh, class and then I attended. When I attended, they taught me technical analysis in Singapore stock market using CFD. And then back then, uh, I can tell you something, you know, I, I find, okay, now that I think back a little bit fishy, you know why? Because they taught me CFD, they taught me the methods, right? Then after that, right, uh, when we actually tried to open a brokerage account back then, you, we couldn't open a CFD account. I don't know whether you heard of CFD. It gives you leverage up to seven times. Nowadays, I think they reduce the leverage, but that's where... That's where my first trade, I remember very clearly, it was bread talk. Within three days, I make $5,000. Then, wow, surely, I mean, it's like quite, quite good, right? So after making $5,000, right, I'm thinking, hey, my whole one, one month of working, right, I make, I make 3000 you know. With two clicks of a button, you buy bread talk, you sell, you make $5,000. I said, wow, this is good. This is good stuff. And then I began to sort of like, because I remember my previously, my friend Sufyan, he, he didn't teach us how to invest. So now I learned how to invest, right? I wanted to teach my friends. I gather my friends and I tell them, hey guys, I want to tell you something amazing. Look, I'm stock market. I open my account and show them, you know. You see, I make money, you know. Then instead of wanting to learn from me, they say, hey, wow, can we put money together and invest? I say, okay, la, let, let's do it together. I pulled together about $100,000. Uh, uh, by, by three months, I burned off $60,000. I remember what Maple Tree, tr Maple Tree, uh, 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 well, all, all the Singapore stocks are. Okay, I'm not saying Singapore stocks are bad, but because I was on a very high leverage, right? The stock market swing a bit. I, I, got, I got margin call out. So, it, Wow, it's like I, I don't know I don't know how to explain the feeling now. But I remember when I look at the screen, right? Wow, I lost sixty thousand, right? It, it is not just my money, you know. It's my friends' money, and 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 I know how hard they work, and I know the dreams that they have. We say, oh, we have to make money so that we can do this. All this come into my mind. Right? It's like, wow, what 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 have I done? Eh? So I I remember I, I I didn't know what to do. You know, I just I just closed my laptop that night. I I remember like my tears like tears was going down, and then after that I called them the next day. I said, hey, can we meet up uh, somewhere under tell you or something? We meet up at East Coast. There was a McDonald's there. Then I just tell them, I said, hey guys, I'm so sorry. I, 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 I lost the money. I, I opened the account and showed them. I just showed them and I don't know what to say. They, they, they look at the account. They also don't know what's happening. So I have to tell them, hey, you see, uh, this, this, this amount, right? Uh, gone. It's all gone. Whoa. Uh, but their, their reaction, right, was, was amazing. Uh. So, so two of them, Daniel and Adrian, they say, hey, bro, it's okay. Uh. They say, 
you definitely will make it back for us one. They, they say that to me, what even more stress. <laughs> but, that, but that gives me the motivation. That gives you the motivation like, hey, I, I have to do something. I have to think of how to make it back. So I attended wow. different, different classes and uh, I keep trying to find this system that can make it back because I lost faith in the first one already. The first one burned a lot of cash for me. So I lost faith. So I keep finding and finding and finding. After, 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 after a while, no, no more money to attend class, right? So what I did was uh, I, I traded traded system. So someone go and attend this. I said, hey, you attend that class. Uh, I, I, I trade with you. Uh. So, so I teach you this, you teach me that. So we traded, traded. Well, I still cannot make, you know, sometimes make, sometimes loss. I go Forex. I go uh, a lot of things. Uh, it becomes very, very stressful. Especially the Forex one, super stressful. MT4 trader. So, and, and I, even, I even for a short period of time, uh, became a hedge fund trader. I was, I was employed into a hedge fund uh, to, to trade Forex. So we actually use black box algorithm. We traded throughout the nights. We actually back tested everything. And it's a very interesting one. You can go and back test everything. Uh. It works beautifully based on past records. When you go forward test, right, you just need to miss one or two trades, right? That's it. You will not make, make the money. So, so ultimately, right, interestingly, remember I told you guys we traded system, correct? So one of the guys that uh, traded system with me, right, was a friend of my friend. My friend is called Jasper. Uh. So my friend said, hey, I got another friend who, who is quite good at investing. Want to share ideas or not? So they were at my house. I remember very clearly in my house. He taught me about this thing called buffetology. He said, I tell, I tell this thing is from this book by Mary Buffett. There's this lady called Mary Buffett that I heard of Warren Buffett, but I'm not, not interested because when I look at magazine, it's this old man. So it's like, old man, not, not interesting. I don't, I, don't want to be, I don't want to make money when I'm so old, is it? So, so it's not interesting to me. I say, uh, okay, la, okay la. I share with you, you share with me. So I, I, meet, I meet up with that guy because my friend wanted me to meet up with him. So I, so I meet up with him. So that day, that day uh, after we look through the screener, everything, he teach me how to look at fundamental analysis super boring it's like oh fundamental what is this man because all the causes i attended right they told me that fundamentals is nonsense they say that a hey, price tells everything a bad stock but they move you still can make money so they tell me that uh, so so it got near into me that fundamentals is lousy but out of respect for for my friend's friend three of us were there uh, i i bought my first stock called nike he because he chose the fundamental for me i just i just buy nike after that i forget about nike i trade other things trade forex trade this trade that right at the end of the year i was so burned out so burnout. out, I look at my, I look at my records, huh? wow. everything either lose a bit of money, lose a lot of money or just make a bit. Only that stupid Nike that I bought, it was kind of funny. Then Nike made 100% and then, it, wow, 100% is excellent, right? But then, then I was thinking, wow, then what I just do some study, I click one button and then the rest of the year never do anything, I, I make so much money. After that, I became obsessed. Huh? I became obsessed. I, I, I said, I should do this. This one, use lesser time and then, uh, but it's not as fun, huh? it's very boring, right? The rest, Forex, all these very, very exciting. Hey, by the way, I'm not saying they are lousy. I'm not, I'm not saying they are good. I'm, I'm lousy in Forex. So I'm not trashing you if you're a Forex guy or, or things like that. But what for me is really fundamental analysis. And I remember the day I deleted my MT4. Uh, it's, it's because I, I was still, although my results was not good, but I was still training. You know? But after that, I realized one thing. When my son was uh, like, like a little baby, right? I was playing with him. I set out my, my laptop so that the trading, when there's a system alarm ring, I can go and trade. I can go and trade. So I was playing with my son. Then after the, the laptop ring, right? So I ran to my table and then I started to do the repair trade or things like that. There, there are certain rules. Uh. Then my son was crying and then want, want me to play with him. I keep like shoving him away. Like I was very frustrated with him. Like, don't, don't, don't come and disturb me. I, I need to go and do serious work, which is money, right? Then after my son keep crying. Uh. Then after that, right? Suddenly I say, hey, what am I doing? What am I doing? Why am I even investing in the first place? It's to spend time with my children, right? Now I'm absorbed, absorbed in this. In this, in this whole entire trading thing, I'm, I'm addicted. So, so this, this is something I realized about myself. Uh. When I realized I'm addicted, I can actually put a stop to it. Uh. Immediately, uh, I went to the account. I, I withdraw all the money. I deleted the account. Once I delete, right, wow, suddenly, right, I felt a weight off my shoulder. You know? And then I never touched that again. So that's why, that's why I, I, I don't do a lot of trading. Uh. Not because, number one, I'm not, not very good. Number two, I, I want the time. To me, time is of absence. Uh, it is the most important. So, so even if I make lesser money, if I don't monitor the market, it's okay for me. I wanted to have a spare time. Then I focus a lot on fundamentals. That's where I meet Mary Buffett and I focus on the Buffett investing way, now, which is very fundamental and it helps me build, build wealth. But I tell you this, um, uh, so, so, so am, I, am I sharing? <laughs> yeah, so you're not empty for counting stuff. So I want to share with you something. Actually, right, after that, when I saw the power of value investing, right, I began to formulate a plan. I, I began to become more, I, I, I share with you this, I want to tell you guys this, in order to get rich, right, really rich, you have to get rid, get rid of the get rich quick mindset, in my opinion, okay, sorry, so I don't know, quick, get rich quick is how quick for you guys, but I start to formulate a plan, I say, I'm going to, I'm going to master this, for the next two years, I'm not going to touch anything, I'm going to focus on fundamental analysis, 
every morning, 4 a.m., I'm going to wake up and study. 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. If I, if I wake up, if I, if I sleep very late, maybe 5 a.m., I'm going to wake up, spend at least one hour studying, studying, studying. So every day I wake up and study, 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 study. I just try to find one stock. Every day I just try to find one stock. Sometimes not good stocks. Never mind. I pack up by 5 a.m. I go to work. So every morning I will wake up and do that. This, 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 this is what I did. La. Then after a while, things became clearer to me and I built my wealth and uh, by the age of 28 years old. So that, that time when I started investing was uh, 20, 25. So 28, I actually hit the milestone and 29, eight, by, by 29, 30, I already left already. And so it's actually shorter than I thought, man. So I don't know, like, three, three to five years, is, is it a good plan for you guys? If it's a good plan, your, your, your type, uh, five years, okay? I, I know it sounds very long to some of you, uh, because it sounds long, long to me initially. I wanted to get rich quick within the next three months or six months. I want to quit. I wanted to have all the time written within that six months. Uh. But after that, suddenly, eight, five, five years doesn't seem that, that long. Compared to, compared to like, you're going to live until 80, 100, right? Just spend that five years, go and build this thing, uh, right? So, Guys, so if you, all, if, you all, if you all feel there's so much wisdom in what Sean shared, tap in wisdom, my friends. Tap in wisdom. All right, guys, if you all listen to what he said, if you all truly listen, oh man, there's so much wisdom in it, right? In the entire process of, you know, I, I love this one quote, which is basically this. You know, I think, uh, wait, hold on, let me, let me search for the quote. Tap in... Type in wisdom, MT4. A lot of people, a lot of people do forex before MT4. It's very exciting, lah. I use a lot of Fibonacci and stuff. Yep. So I, I love this. I, I love this quote. And basically, uh, the quote basically is this, right? Um, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Right. I really, really love this. And it's always, you know, it's a great reminder from the good book, right? It's from Mark six, uh, Mark 8, 36. And I really, really love it. Love it. But what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, right? So uh, again, you know, what is the reason we are actually pursuing wealth, right? So Sean, again, he, he knew that he was doing it for his family. But at some point of time, he realized that, hey, you know, he's shoving his son away because he wanted to actually trade. And that's when he actually made a mis that's when he actually made this decision to delete his account. I think that is such wisdom, right? And I think Sean mentioned something which is very, very important, which was when he identified that he was addicted. Yep. That's when he actually let it go. Sean, can you talk to us about addictions and how addictions can be very, very dangerous? Well, it's, 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 I, I, I don't know whether I am like uh I didn't went too deep into it. Lah. But I did see a lot of students, right? They when when they are addicted, many will say the money take over them already. When we talk about financial freedom and things like that, right, you must have control of it. So I, I think like when we talk about the Bible, right, God said you cannot serve two masters, you know. Now, when you say serve the master, right, means when the master call you, you will actually go, right? So like, for example, the MT4 or, or, or the Forex trading things, right, it was controlling me. It became my master. So when they call, I go. When they call, I go. No, some people, they are addicted to work. So work become their master. Some people, they are addicted to different things, you know. So you, you can see, um, especially so if let's say it is not your first choice. What, what do I mean by that? You can ask a lot of people, what is most important to you? So a lot of people say, oh, uh, family is important to me or, or whatever is important to me, correct? But is that your first choice? Now, so, so I have a friend, right? He keep telling me that, wow, he doesn't have work-life balance. He want to spend more time with family. He hates his work, his work because he's taking out so much time. Then I say, then, then tell your boss that <laughs> tonight you don't want to work late. Lah. Then, then, but but I, because he was my colleague lah, back then, and then when the boss said, hey, tonight, uh, can I can I actually ask you to do something? He, he said, okay. He said, yes, sir. Then I said, hey, what, what, the, what, what, what the shit are you talking about? It's like, you're, you're nonsense, what? If you got something, your, your daughter's birthday tonight, why you go and tell yes to your boss? So, so he became addicted to work. I, I can tell this. this. This is very serious. When, when, when you let go of things that's more important to go and chase after something that you yourself don't even want to do, right? You're out of control. You're out of control, you know? This, this is very scary. So, and, and sometimes you can't even see that you're out of control. And even when... The worst is, the worst for some people is no, they know they're addicted and they cannot get out. So it's a struggle. It's an emotional struggle. So I think when you get addicted, right, the most important thing is number one, to identify. And number two, to really, it's like cancer. Like, you must really just chop it off. Chop it off and then run away. I, I think there, there are many references for the Bible. So, so like if there's temptation or there's anything, right, the Bible says run. You run away from it. You don't go and play the addiction. Or let me try try a bit more. La. Like you're addicted to, to handphone game. Delete the stupid game. Okay. If you're addicted to uh, okay, for me, for me, I, I played this game called Final Fantasy VII. I, I don't know whether you'll remember this time. Uh. So Final mm -hmm. Fantasy VII, right? At the point in time, I was dating my wife. Uh, she was my girlfriend. I play so much uh, until right. She called me, say, hey, uh, later shall we go out? I said, Hey, sorry, uh, I feel a bit sick. So I lied to her. 
I tell lie, I tell, I tell her that I'm sick, you know. Then after I thought after I put on the phone, I realized that I said, hey, why am I telling lie? Why, 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 why did I lie to her? Because I want to play the game. You know what I did? I, I don't know whether you all remember the time of a uh, Sony PlayStation uh, where you put a CD in. I took out the CD, I break the CD, and then I, I just throw it away. You break the CD, delete all your save games, all the things. You must get rid of it. You must be very ruthless, get rid of it. Otherwise, it will hunt you for life. So wow. I, I don't know whether that, that makes sense to you guys. Uh, no, you also absolutely. play for the 7 uh. Mm. Guys, how many of y'all? How many of y'all agree? As in, okay, so let me just read you this one quote, and I love this quote, right? Again, it's from the good book. It says, "No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God right. is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, will provide the way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it." You know, there's so much uh, wisdom in that one quote. And again, you know, it says, no temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to men. Again, you know, it's written there that, hey, you know, sometimes addictions and temptations, you know, you got to run away from it. Like what Sean says, guys, it's so, so very, very, very cru crucial, right? Again, if something becomes addictive and you know that it's not good for your soul, you got to learn to let go, right? Seriously, guys, I know some of you, all, it, it applies to alcohol. It applies to gambling. It applies mm. to computer games. It even applies to if, you know, trading is overtaking you. Amen. Guys, some of you all need to hear this. Some of you all know this message is for you. So I'm telling you, right, it's very, very important. And, you know, I tr totally believe that. But Sean, I'm addicted to something, bro. Right. I'm addicted to uh, changing people's lives. Changing That's people's lives. Right. <laughs> for the better. So That's no, what no, I mean. But, but again, uh, you see, uh, you, 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 uh, like, like what I mentioned, are you still in control of it or not? So yeah. when there's a certain purpose of it, and it is something that you are you are you are purposefully consciously of it, it's okay. So what, what do I mean by that? Uh? So for, for me, uh, I, I don't have all my notebooks, uh, but I, I do journaling in the morning. I will do journaling and I write down the things that are important to me. I, I okay, first thing I write is always things that I'm grateful for. Uh. So I thank God for like my family, my health. I'll just be grateful. Then the next thing is you purposefully write down what you want to actually achieve. So if you go and achieve those things, it's okay. But you see, um, addiction means, right, there's something pulling away, pulling you away from your goals. Like you say, oh, family is important. I want to spend more time with my, my parents. And then, oh, you are working like 24-7 and then you never spend time with them. This is addiction, right? This is called, like, you're, you're having fear like, of a lot of things. And sometimes this fear is all fake, you know? It's like you go and imagine it yourself, you know? Addicted to options trading. Uh. So, you must so review, right? I want to share with you all something, guys. You know, what, what Sean is sharing is so true, right? See, in the other day, you know, you can um, choose your... Okay, like I, I wrote this post a long time ago, right? Like, you know, there, there's some people who are addicted to, you know, going to a club, for example, or like, you know, alcohol, you alcohol. or alcohol. To, whatever it is. Like for me, like for me, let me share with you all something. Huh? For me, ever since I was, uh, ever since I was young, like my addiction, my addiction was to mm -hmm. get fit. Mm -hmm. uh, was to going to the gym <laughs> it's in uh, teaching it's in sharing it's in investing right so you know if there's something that you wanna you know hey bro you're not but, human uh. you're, you're, you're you not know, very you're not very <laughs> relatable to me <laughs> for me mine is more like playing games <laughs> okay but I'm just I'm just kidding I mean it's, it's good that you're you're living on purpose okay hey, by the way by the way now now that you mentioned right I just I just show you my favorite book uh. so so this is hey Bibiana is here actually she gave me one of this uh, book also so this book is called The Purpose Driven Life. This, this book, right, became, I mean, it, it led the way that I live uh, and I forget when I feel very down, I'll go back to this book. So if you live purposefully, I don't think it's called addiction, bro. It's called, it's called yeah. Purpose Driven. Purpose yeah, Driven absolutely. and not addiction driven. It's different, huh? Unless you yeah. want to be the world record holder for smoking the number of cigarettes. Doesn't make sense, lah. It's like, Come on, it's, it's, so there's a certain purpose in it. Yeah. So I want to I wanna share something with you, bro. I said, I don't think you know this, but um, you know that book that you're, you're holding? Uh, that book that book was uh, the book that I read when I was in the hospital. Oh, okay. So yeah, I was in the hospital for a long time when I was 19 years old. Um, I received that book and that book got me through the hardest of times. Mm -mm -mm. It triggered something in me, right? So again, you know, sometimes when I look back and I and I, I think about my life, I think about you know all these times, and I have that copy still to this very day. It's a different, it's a different version, but it was yeah. that book, Eric oh, Warren's book, right? Yeah, yeah, it's the Purpose Driven Life, and that was the book which I received, and you know that book was a was a turnaround for me, right? And you know today, I every day I look at this, 
every day I look at this. Mm, mm, mm. Every day I look at this. And again, I'm going to read this quote one more time to you all. It says, to be successful in a profession or in business, to become wealthy cannot be compared to making the lives of a fellow man better. This can bring immense satisfaction. How different would this world be had I not been here? Every day I live with purpose. Every day I think of this man and I live a purpose-driven life. Right, so that's basically for me. And uh, Sean, actually, that was a very, very interesting question, right, by right. Magdalene. Magdalene actually asked this question: How do you deal with uh, losses? How do I deal with losses? Yeah, especially in stock market. How, how, how do you deal with losses? Hey, frankly, yeah, uh, it's very, it's very painful, uh. Okay, so uh, but but nowadays is is a bit different. Nowadays, I begin to manage my expectation. So in the past, I think we have a certain, I would say, unrealistic expectation. A lot of people feel that okay, if you follow all the rules. If you do all your homework, if you calculate all the intrinsic value and stuff like that, you must be right. I can tell you there's no such thing. The, the stock market doesn't care, right, whether you go and do how much homework. You do homework so that you can actually have a game plan, right? So I always have the expectation in the past, hey, the, the, the trading teacher teach me this. If I do this, I must be right. So, so the cutting loss portion is very, very diff difficult for me, okay? Uh, some of you may relate to it to this. But, but after that, right, I, I realized something now. Even Warren Buffett also make, make losses. So my, beliefs, my, my mindset is going to become more realistic. So now for me, right, I actually do this. I aim for 20 stocks. And this is something a little bit more practical. Out of 20 stocks, right, I will tell myself out of these 20, there will be some people, uh, some, some people, there will be some stocks that disappoint me. Okay, but this is related to people. So I can tell you it's very funny. Huh? So out of 20 stocks, five, I call them suicide bombers. But I don't know which one is it. I'm going to choose the best of the best. So five of them will be suicide bombers. Five of them, right, will be underperformer. Well, suicide bombers are, are those that maybe totally crash. So underperformer, right, is they lose a bit of money. Five of them, right, will be uh will be as expected. So because I buy the stocks, I expect them to grow well, right? So five of them as expected, and five of them, right, will be the underdogs. They will boom fly fly very high one. This is my experience, lah. I think your whole portfolio for those who have been investing long enough, you know that it is not every single stock that perform well. It is that few stock that help you push your whole entire portfolio up. But without having a portfolio of 15 to 20 stocks, you will never know which one is the one that push you up. So, so it's, it's just like in life or in anything. Ma. It's like, you, you, you see, uh, I, I, I remember this quote which uh, helps me a lot through life. So, am I still there or am I hang? Still there, correct? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I remember a quote, right? That helps me in my. Uh, a lot of people ask me, uh, Sean, how come a lot of people call me a naive person? I mean, for those who know me in the, in the business world, in the speaking industry, one thing they always ask is, hey, Sean, how come you got so many speakers on? After, after you train the speakers, don't you afraid like they also go and set up a business and all that? Then, f first of all, it's like, eh, they set up, they set up. La. It's like, okay, what? Like, my boss last night also encouraged me to go and do my own things, correct? This is the first thing. La. The second thing is, the second thing is like, so, so they, they will ask me, la, after doing business with so many people, um, don't, don't you become a bit more skeptical, correct? They ask me this. I, uh, I, 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 uh, but, but I think, I think rational me. I, I'm, I'm a pretty naive person and I'm a pretty, like, I rather trust first until that person uh, sort of like uh, uh, break the trust. Uh. That's, why, that's why some people feel that I cannot eaten by people here and there, but, but doesn't matter. But I remember this quote that helps me a lot. Okay, and it's related to stock. Uh. This, how you deal with people, how you deal with stocks, right? Actually matches on, you know? So if you are so scared that every stock disappoints you, right? You will never invest, ma, correct? You get it? So you must have the expectation. Yeah, some people or some stocks will definitely disappoint you one. But remember this, um, I like this thing that someone actually told me this. He said that I rather trust I rather trust and move in faith and be disappointed sometimes. Definitely have one. As you move, you'll be disappointed sometimes. Rather than be skeptical and be mistrusting and be miserable all the time. I can tell you, uh, if, if, if you are working every day, scared that people harm you, scared that this stock drops, scared that this, oh, you keep living in fear, very, very terrible, like, very, very tiring like, to me. Like, okay? So it's good, to be, yeah, it's good to be naive. Like, okay? Naive doesn't mean being stupid. Like, okay? So I don't, I don't, wow, this stock very good. Yay, I throw all, I sell my house and go and buy. I'm not so... I'm not so naive until I am, uh, this is called CD already. Uh. Okay, this is called CD. So I'm naive, meaning you say I still have trust, but I will position size. Even the Bible also say, uh, you know, the richest, okay, hey, this one very important. Uh. The richest man on earth, uh, on the Bible, right, is this guy called Solomon. He's so rich, right? If you go and calculate how much money he has, it's in trillions based on today's standard. And this is a real person, if you go and check the history. Uh, he, he himself even said this in e e Ecclesiastes, he gives you a very powerful investment tip. He say, divide, uh, divide your trades into seven or eight portions. Hey, let me ask you something. Uh. Am, am, I the, am, I, am I the one lagging? No, right. Sorry. So, so he said this, uh, divide your, your ventures right, into seven or eight portions. 
Now, let me ask you this. This guy is the smartest guy on earth. In the Bible, God gave him wisdom and make him so smart. If he's so smart, right, why does he need to diversify? He confirmed, can guarantee get a trade, correct, right? He confirmed whatever business he do will, 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 will be power, right? Actually, no. Because he's so smart, he knows that being a human, being in a world that has uh, unforeseen circumstances, uh, you need to diversify. So this is something very, very powerful. It, but it, it's biblical to diversify. Uh. You go and work everything in one trade. Well, now, even the smartest guy on earth also tell you to diversify already. You think you are smarter than him and say don't need. So, so this is something. Uh. When you diversify means you are telling yourself, I may be wrong. That's where you must tell yourself, I may be wrong. So, so if, if you're wrong, if you are really wrong, then you are right to be wrong, right? I mean, you're right in being wrong. Right? Then you, it's in part of your game plan. Don't know whether this makes sense to you guys. Lah. <laughs> Am I going uh, tongue twister? It's very interesting, very interesting. Guys, uh, if you all have loved sharing, smash the love button. Let me see, guys. Let me see the love button being smashed. I want to see the love button being smashed. And my friends, I want to invite you this invite you to do this one thing. If you believe that there's been a lot of wisdom, if you know that people will really, really benefit from this, I want to invite you to share this video right now. Share this video right now. We talked about so many talking points, but hey, we're just getting started, yo. We're just getting started. So again, share this video and type in share if you've shared this video. I want to see y'all share this video, my friends. So share, take a picture of me and Sean. Sean, let's take a let's do a post together. Let's do a post together. All right. Three, I don't know. Three, two, one. Let's go. Okay, fantastic. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, fantastic. You take, take a photo again together, okay, bro? Yeah. All right, so take a photo of us, post it, share your best lessons as well, and share this video. You'll get a special prize. Absolutely amazing, right? So anyways, so what I want to tell you all is... Impressions. Yeah. So, Sean, I want to actually ask you yeah. um, a very, very important thing, bro. Yeah. All right. So, you know, a lot of people are looking to, you know, make their first million, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh... Oh, it's first million, first million, like that's a big goal to them, right? So, uh, what was your process like? How exactly do you make your first million, right? Mm -hmm. If you if you don't mind sharing that journey, like so you achieved it, you said twenty eight years old, right? So, but you were uh you had a paycheck of three thousand dollars, right? As a normal salary, man, that, right? after that increase uh, increase along the way, okay, but <laughs> but sure sure sure. sure. So, the normal mm -hmm. salary, right? As in it, I said I'm 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 not assuming your salary oh, was twenty thousand dollars. So how did how did that grow to you know, a million, uh, your, 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 literally your first part of goal. How, how did that happen? Hey, I, I, I honestly tell you guys, I don't know. It's on, it's upon looking back, then I even know I crossed a million. Okay. Initially, it's always about, wow, becoming a millionaire. And, and I, I think that, hey, why, why do I want to be a millionaire? I think because it sounds cool. Uh. Frankly, it's like, it's like, it, it sounds cool. And then after that, uh, I mean, I, I, I initially, when I started, I watched a lot of uh, personal development um, things. And they always talk about being a millionaire, being a millionaire. It, it sounds, it sounds really cool. Uh, uh, there's nothing against it. When you are able to make a million or you have a million dollars of net worth, right? It shows that you provide millions of dollars worth of value. Understand? So you must actually grow yourself to be able to provide that value. Now, in terms of the way that I create a million is by asset allocation. So I actually, I actually, okay, but I tell you guys this. Uh, so I'm telling you guys all the dirty secrets that I have uh, in terms of like even illegal stuff and stuff like that. Okay, not so much of illegal, uh, but, but because when I started uh, working, correct, uh, I, I was working, my wife wasn't working. So I had, uh, I had my wife. And then she was pregnant, she had kids and all that. So I, I know I need to do side hustle. Lah. Because whatever salary I have, well, it's good enough, it's good enough. But I also did a part-time job as much as I, I can do. So during weekends and stuff like that, I, I tried to start out business, which I realized I'm not a very good businessman. So just now, someone asked me about the business portion. I can share with you. I may not be the best person to give you advice, but pr pr probably uh, just sharing experience, I, I learned to get more capital. I really couldn't work. So some people, that's, that's, that's where I get my first paycheck as an investment teacher. Because one of my friends, Jeremiah, hey, this, this story quite funny. Man. So because I was trading the stock market, I was actually doing a lot of things. One of my friends, Jeremiah from military, right? I, I don't know whether he's here, but never mind, I just share. He, he, he asked me, hey, can, can come to my house and teach people how to invest or not? Teach me and my friends. I said, okay, nah, because I burn a lot of money already. I, I want them to not burn. Nah. I went to the house, I teach him and two other friends. After that, right, you know what happened? At the end of the day, right, he, he gave me a check, you know? He said, hey, bro, nah, thanks for teaching us. He gave me a check and the check is $5,000. Wow. I got shocked, you know. I said, wow, serious? Uh? I said, wow, why? What? Then, then I, I feel a bit embarrassed now uh, to get a check and stuff like that. So after he said, hey, no, uh, it's okay. Uh. You, then you know what he told me? He said, you know, just now the two friends that came, right? I charged each of them 5,000. So I share half with you only. So I said, wow, this guy is an amazing entrepreneur, you know. But I, 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 just, I just realized, hey, there are, there are many ways to make money. So he opened up my, my eyes also, uh, this Jeremiah. Uh, but, but Jeremiah, he super good entrepreneur, but he also got uh, enrolled into some scams here and there. Uh. Then he... he 
he sort of like uh, 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 introduced us to some okay sunshine empire and stuff like that. But, but I don't blame him. I seriously don't blame him. He told me that some some of his uh, other colleagues because he also didn't know. He also didn't know. So so we also make money, lose money, but we we test out a lot of things. So huh? the the key thing is this: um, after a while, I gave up. I gave up on the idea of being a millionaire. Okay, I actually became. I break my goals down. So very important, now, guys. I break my goals down. So I actually ask myself: number one, what do I? How much do I need? Okay, by the way. I want to give credit. This one I learned from uh, Adam Koo, but somehow I saw it on Tony Robbins' side also. So I don't know who copied who and stuff like that. Doesn't matter. The knowledge is passed down to me. They say you break your goals into a few, few portions. Number one, they call it uh, financial security. Financial security right means, means right, you must have at least six months of your savings. Six months of your expenses. Can you all type six months? So aim for six months of your expenses. Float. Anything happen, you can survive six months. Right now, COVID, some people cannot survive one month. Okay, six months of expenses. Number two, go right is they call financial stability. Okay, I think first one is security, second one is stability. Means, right, you look at your finances right now, then you, you tell yourself, if, I, if, if you get retrenched, right, and you have to survive as long as possible, right, what is the basic needs you need? Maybe you'll sell away your car, maybe you'll sell away this. So what's the basic needs? Then you calculate, right, you realize, it, actually every month, uh, you may not need a lot. Uh, it is those luxury, you must, you must differentiate, uh, luxury versus uh, uh, needs versus wants. If you focus on needs, very likely, and then if you, can you downgrade to a, a, a smaller house and things like that? You can do a lot of this, this kind of things. Uh. So what's the basic one? Maybe you just need 1,000, 2,000 per month. I mean, frankly, uh, I mean, Rash have visited so many people who have survived lesser than the amount, amount of money and they're still surviving, right? So if you can give them 1,000, 2,000 a month, right, it will help a lot. Uh. So if you can make 1,000 or 2,000 a month, month and then you can uh, fulfill your basic needs, uh, you realize that you aim for that kind of passive income first. So if you, I mean, <laughs> we, we do options and stuff like that. Uh. Making one, $2,000 a month, a month is not like, too difficult, right? But you do it stably, if you can hit one, two thousand per month, you know that hey, actually for the rest of your life, uh, if you have the ability to make that amount of money passively from investment, then you don't need to worry about your, your, your money, you know. Anything happen, you just scale down to the basic level. Okay, tuck in tight and then well, su survive for the rest of your life while you figure things out. Then the next one is financial freedom. Uh. So financial security, financial stability, which is passive income equals to your basic need. Then financial freedom, which is passive income equals to your current lifestyle. Then you must uh, find out your current lifestyle. You can, you can adjust your lifestyle a bit one, to make your life easier. La. Then you can reach your goal faster. Then finally is financial abundance. Abundance is your dream lifestyle. How much do you need every month? I, I realize everybody, a, a lot of people la, from the start, when they start investing, they shoot for the dream lifestyle. So looks looks a bit hard to achieve. But when you go progressively, right, then you plan. So I started planning. Then I, I think within like almost one, two years, I can hit my financial uh, stability already. I realized, eh? I, I, can, I, I can easily make money from the stock market. I, I don't need to worry about this for the rest of my life, you know. Then I can focus on a lot of things. I, no, no, no financial stress now. Nah. Very, very cool. Nah. So break down your goals. Okay, important to break down your goals. Okay? You know, Greg, I want to share with you something. These concepts, uh, Sean has written in his books, right? For those of you all who don't know, Sean is a freaking amazing author. His books are simple. They are digestible. So if you're starting out as a new investor, I highly recommend for you to read his books. The one book that changed my investing life was this book called Gone Fishing with Buffett. <laughs> to this very day, it remains my favorite book. But Sean has written many other books. You know, he's written Winning the Money Game. He's written Financial Joy. He's written, uh, you know, Investing like, Buffett, yeah. Invest like Buffett. Uh, how many other titles, bro? I can't even keep up, man. I can't remember. La. Some of them are a bit trash. La. I'm so sorry to say that. I, I really I really apologize if, if let's say some of the books are trash. No, because because I, I think I also make some mistakes here. I don't, think, mistakes trash, here there, I don't huh? think any of the books are trash. I think all the books are absolutely amazing. Like, you know, the books that are right. Financial Joy, it was absolutely amazing. Like, all these, joy, yeah. guys, how many of y'all have read Sean's books? If you have, type in, you know, type in yes. You know, let me see Sean's books. Any of y'all have read Sean's books? And what's your favorite, right? So go and get Sean's books. All right, Bro, are they available on Amazon and stuff? I think they still are unless... It is not selling well, then it stops selling. So, hey, but financial joy, I, I really wrote with 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 a lot of uh, a lot of passion uh, because that time I I I think I, I told you guys I wrote this in the hospital with with, with my son and things like that. Tell so, us about the story. Man. Tell us about the story if you don't mind sharing the story. Yeah. Okay. I I, I don't mind sharing. Uh, I think now is the time that we we openly share and and that the time. Okay. I I want to share with you guys this. I'm not trying to scare you guys or anything. But but the thing is this. At a point in time, uh, I, I my, my 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 child, my second son. He was in kindergarten and then um, he fell down in school. We brought him to the hospital. When, when we came back, then uh, the hospital called us and asked us to go back again and then told us that he did a blood test and uh, he, 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 had, he had blood cancer. It, it, it was a very scary time. Like. It was a very scary time. I, I, I remember that time. Wow, I really, I really did, didn't know how to deal with it. 
it was it was so scary but but you know what's the, what's the interesting thing so it's during that time where i was at the lowest point i, I felt that there was really a lowest point where there's a possibility you may lose your child it's like i i, I don't know whether any of y'all went through that where wow it's it's like so so scary i mean losing a loved one is very scary but losing losing a child that is younger than you i don't think he deserved anything anything like that you know he didn't do anything wrong it's like if you if you didn't take care of your health you go and smoke and stuff like that you, you deserve to actually be sick or things like that right but not a child right then that time well, it was terrible so we spent most of our time in the hospital and i started writing this book when i wrote this book right was because the people around me in my hospital ward it, it was interesting you know you see so 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 there are things that money can do for you there are things that money cannot so at that point in time i wish that well i can just just take all my money now but let my son be healthy i'm, I'm, I'm okay with that you know yeah i just i go and work again you know, it's okay man so 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 uh, during that point in time right i learned to actually one one of the bible verses uh, in in all circumstances give thanks in all circumstances give thanks you know what or not when i think that i was in a very bad shape right because like imagine your child to go through chemotherapy lose his hair all the side effects when 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 i was there with other parents with their child who have uh, uh, different types of uh, illness uh, that, that's where we got to know people from rdss and stuff like that i mean during that period in time they, they, were, they were people worse, worse off because my child still, still, still have a fighting chance. He's, he's, he's fully healed, thank God. But there was, there was a point in time, I remember I... There's different patients together with us. Now. Then there was this, this time, there was a mom, she has a child. So, so, so she asked me, hey, how's your child? So I told her, oh, uh, he's in which cycle? They, uh, and then uh, which, which treatment? Phase what? Uh, which, which phase? Then I asked her back, oh, so how's your child? She asked me, I asked her back, Mark, right? Then, then well, when I asked her back, right, she told me, oh, uh, we are going home today. So, so she said, we are going home today. Then I said, oh, is it, is it uh, fully healed? I mean, is it okay already? He said, the doctor said no more chance already. Just go home and then wait for him to die. I, well, I don't know how to respond, you know. I don't know how to respond. But at that point in time, right, I just sincerely felt, right, that that mom, that mom, right, she was looking at me, she was looking at me with my child who is under treatment, right? And I think, right, I really sincerely felt she wished that she can change place with me. Meaning to say, right, she wished that her chance just, her, her son, right, just have a chance. So, so you think that wow, you're in very bad situation and stuff like that, right? I tell you, some someone out there, right, don't mind changing place if you want. I can tell you this. You think that wow, I lost a lot of money from trading and all that. Someone who is actually maybe, maybe like they, they are about to die, right? They say, I, I don't mind losing money from trading. I don't mind like starting from scratch and go and go and work, work, work like a dog just to have a chance to survive or just to have a chance for, for my son to survive. I, I tell you, through, through, through that period, I realized, hey, actually, in bad circumstances, you can have joy, right? And joy is not things that happen to you. Joy is already inside being grateful because at a point in time, I can share with you all something. Uh, at a point in time, I, I also depended on, on, on God a lot more because these are things that with my so-called hard work, I mean, I can work hard to actually make investment choices. I can work hard. I can actually, I, I don't really pride myself to be smart. I don't pride myself to be smart. I, I pride myself to be a hardworking person, but there's nothing I can do to work hard to cure my son, you know? And, and, and I, I remember one night, right? One night I was just there uh, lying on the bed I mean, my, my son was, was on his hospital bed. So I stayed with him in hospital for almost, you calculate the number of days that we stay inside, right? It's almost maybe plus together, almost two years now. So I spent time in the hospital writing that book, doing the investment. But I was so, so grateful in the sense that finances, I don't need to worry. Otherwise, imagine I still need to go to work, okay? So when I was there, a lot of parents still need to go to work. And you know, the children, CCF, like, CCF Children's uh, Cancer Foundation, right? They always come and then make the children happy, try to become a clown. I mean, they really, they really do a lot, you know, but the children want their parents, right? they say, where's daddy, where's mommy? They, 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 they don't want, I mean, the tete who play with them for a while can comfort them, but they always want the parents, but the parents need to go to work, so can't be there. But for me, I have the privilege, the blessings of being there. Like. So I wrote the financial joy, telling people like, well, how to, how to actually manage your finances, how to make sure that like in this kind of situation, what to do. So, so that's where I came out with financial joy. But one, one, one thing important, right, is uh, really, really my journey with God, right? At that point in time, because my, my son was there and, and I saw all the needles spoke through him and all that. It, it's really very painful. It's a lot of times I really wish, right? Wow, why don't why don't I be the one who have to go through all this? Seriously, when you when I see my son doing that. And then right, um, I, I actually have a thought came to my mind, you know, one night when, when I was seeing him sleep with all the tubes in his nose and all that. Then I asked myself, right, will there be a certain circumstances where I'm willing, right, to make my son go through this kind of suffering, right? To save someone else. So suddenly this thought just come to mind. I say, well, if, if, if anyone right, ever wants my son to go through this kind of treatment to save, let's say, he, his life or his son, right, I can tell you guys, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry to say I will be selfish right, and say, no way, don't touch my son. Do not touch my son, you know. Then I, I begin, I, I don't know why this talking to my mind. Then I say, hey, but what if, my, what if it's my parents? What if, what if my, my, my parents who love me, right? 
Let's say maybe if it's my parents, right, I will have a second thought. I will say, I will be put into a dilemma to say, maybe I need to make my son go through the suffering to save my parents, to like transfer certain like organs or what to them. Uh. Then, then may, maybe I'll do that. Then suddenly a voice came to me and, and then it was, it was actually, I, I'm just reminded uh, that, that God actually sent his son for me, you know, and make his son suffer for me. So, so that at a point in time, because, because the Bible says uh, that, that, that God, for God so loved the world that he sent his son. And then when his son died for me, it's through suffering. It's not just they go through anesthesia, got, got, got those uh, painkillers, and then they, okay, nah, finish the operation. It's not, you know, he has to go through a suffering and then die for me. It's like, hey, who am I, man? So, so for me, I'm only willing to even consider, right, if it's someone I love a lot, which is my parents. But, but God didn't even hesitate. And then he just sent his son to die for me. Then I realized, wow, the, the, the kind of love, right, is, 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 is so real, you know. And, and, and that night, right, wow, I can tell you, I really felt like this, this is what it really means now. When, when, when you sacrifice your own son, who, who, who will actually do that? So, so, so I was, I became so like grateful. Like, and I realized that actually a lot of things, right? You, 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 you realize that you think you're in a very bad situation. You're actually still being very loved by, 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 by God Almighty. Like. So, so I just wanted to share that. I, I don't know what it is. Sorry, it's not going anywhere. Like. I'm just sharing, just, just had all the, well, all the experience coming back to me. Very, very scary period, but felt very loved. And then after that, right, I can tell you in the midst of all the troubles, there's joy. There's joy, you see, because you know that, hey, you're being loved. You're taken care already. Even, even God is willing to die for you. Oh, what's the big deal? So a lot of things can go through. So this is, this is just something I want to share now. Yep. Okay, so how many of you all felt that was powerful? If you all felt that was powerful, that been powerful, my friends. That been powerful. And hey, guys, you know, if you all are listening to this and you know that your friends will be impacted by the sharing, share this video. Why? Because it will change somebody's life. I know there will be one parent who needs to hear this. I know there will be one child who needs to hear this. And you can make a difference by simply sharing this video. By simply sharing this video. Share the video. Let them feel some love. Do that. Right? And I want to share with you something. Sean, I want to share with you this story. I think I've told you this before. But I need to tell all of you all, you know, one more time. Right? Many years ago, I decided to sign up for your program. And the reason why I decided to sign up for your program is not because of value investing, not because of whatever it is. It's because of, the so if, because of that story that you shared. And um, and it was because very very simply when you shared that story of you know how you're able to be there for your son because you have achieved your financial independence, right? And you didn't have to worry about money. Uh, that's exactly what I wanted, right? Because right. you know I went through a very very serious medical condition myself, and you know I I was telling myself like hey you know if in the future I have a son, I want to make sure that I never ever have to worry about money, right? I didn't right. ever want to have money to be a uh, a concern for me. Right. And that's the reason why I signed up that day. Right. Like, hey, man, you know, I was a very young dude back then. I was very yep, young. Yep. Right. Yep. I was in army uniform coming to the classes in my army uniform. But hey, I had a big vision, a big goal. And the goal was very simply to never have money to ever hinder me from anything that I ever wanted to do. And so, yeah, thank you for sharing this story, bro. Because if not for that story, um, <laughs> I know it, yeah. it is it's interesting uh, because I seldom share that story. You know, you know why I don't don't like to share that story? I I I'm a I'm a because every time I share that story, it brings me back to that point, which is which is actually very to me it's a very dark period. Although I felt God's love, but I can still feel God's love in joy. I I I don't like to go back to that space. Okay, so so I, I don't always share that story a lot of times. Uh. So I interestingly that I mean maybe maybe it was meant to be for me to share at that point in time. I don't think you hear me sharing it very often. Yeah. No, no, you don't. He doesn't, guys. Seriously, Sean doesn't share his story uh, very, very often. You know, he he not even in his programs and everything very hardly because, as you can imagine, it's a very, very tough thing for any parent to go through, right? Like, hey, man, you know, I see a lot of parents like Sean. As a result, introduced me to Red Disorder Society Singapore, and yo, right. <laughs> a lot of things has happened since then with what I've done. RDSS and you know the, the amount of money, the amount of activities, everything, the lives that we've impacted, and it was all because of what Sean shared. So, brother, like, hey, man, you know, he oh. planted that seed in me, right? He planted that seed, and that seed germinated into everything that we've produced over the last 10 years, bro. Like, so, right. hey, Whoa, you know, 10 years. it's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we are so, we are so much more mature now. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. Yep. So it, it was meant to be, right? So again, guys, you know, so again, I just want to share about something, right? A very, very powerful thing, which is, you know, there's power in your stories. Each and every one of you all who are watching, the 700 of you all who are watching live, there's power in your stories to transform somebody's life, right. right? Like, hey, you know, you never know where that seed will go. 
share your stories and hey guess what it might truly impact and you know change the trajectory of the entire lives hey man you know so, you know something for the rest of my life i'll agree i'll give credit to this one man sean sia for sharing that one story because if not for that one story that he shared my life will be pretty different and i'm damn sure right i'm very 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 sure so again you know thank you brother for sharing that story because it has a different wife lock right <laughs> no i'm just kidding absolutely no. dude hey for those of you all who don't know sean uh, i'm very soon marrying a uh, Marrying Winnie and Winnie happens to be Sean's uh, <laughs> cousin. Yes, my my children will get angpao from him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, it's going to happen very very soon in the next couple of months. I'll let you know the date. We decide on date today, bro. Steady lah. Uh. Hey, my my brother is getting married this Saturday. I'm helping him do all the Zoom and stuff. So maybe I can be your video man also. Fantastic, man. fantastic, fantastic, guys! How many of you have felt, you know, felt impacted? If you felt impacted by this sharing, smash the love button, my friends. But most importantly, most importantly, I want to ask you all a question, right? I want to ask you a question. How many of you would love to learn how to be able to give thanks in all circumstances? I know some of you all. I feel it in my spirit that some of you all are going through some tough times, and hey, you're finding it a little bit hard to give thanks in all circumstances. Maybe you have a Members going through exactly what Sean's child actually went through, and you're finding it really a li little bit hard to go through and to actually give thanks, and you might not see the light. How many of you feel that way? If you feel that way, type in me, my friends. If you feel that way, type in me, and uh, I just want to know, right? I just want to know uh, who feels that way, right? So again, just type in me, and I want to see. And very, very simply, guys, um, you know, it's not something that is easy to go through. I just want to acknowledge that. But what really, really helps is if. You have people around you actually understand the situation. Is if you have somebody actually standing with you in prayer, I think that will really, really help, right? So again, if you're going through that situation, just type in me. I just want to see the names. Anybody who's going through some tough times and you want to learn how to give thanks, man, right? If you're that person, type in me, right? Again, you know, I see the comment section flooding. I see a lot of people typing in me and stuff like that. And Sean, I just want to invite you. To maybe say a word of prayer, I just want—I want to invite you to pray for these people, and you know, and I believe we've got to be faithful in prayer, right? So, Sean, yes, yes, yes. Maybe, maybe before before I say the prayer, I want to give you guys a context. Sure. This this is a very powerful gift that was given to to me by by my parents. Now, my 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 dad was a uh, was never a Christian, so he, in fact, uh, he became an atheist lah because because he. He was a he was a Buddhist, I think, initially, and then his mom actually uh had had very bad illness, and then he actually went to all the different different places. He told me now he went to all the different places, and then he challenged the God there. He said, "Heal my mom, and I will I will my life is yours for the rest of of the rest of my life. You can take my life." So 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 he challenged every single God. He he actually went to the church. He went to everywhere, but his his mom his mom left him. So he was very devastated, and he said that God is fake. He told me this. He said that he was very angry. He said that if he's a real God, God is fake. Okay, there's no such thing. So, so there was there was a friend of his who faithfully actually ministered to him in the in the military. He was a military officer, my dad. And uh, over the years, right, over the years, right, he kept telling my that that friend of his. He said God is fake. God is fake. God is fake. And then and then in the end, right, my that that friend of his brought him to a pro probably just an Easter or some celebration. Uh. And then during the celebration, right, the person who was sharing the message say this thing. He actually shared this verse, which I want to share with you guys because this verse, right. Somehow shook my dad. That shook, shook my dad in the sense like hey, he began to think otherwise now. So for years he keeps saying no, God is not real. He trusted in his own strength. If you see my dad before, right? He's a very strong guy physically. Even up to this day, he can outrun a lot of people. Uh, and and he's a very he has very strong character. But he's a very kind-hearted person. And this verse is from Psalms thirty-four eight. It says this: Taste and see that the God is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. So so my 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 dad say right. Hey, when when at the point in time right because. I mean, he he's very self-sufficient. He's doing well as a military officer. But when he heard that verse, taste and see that the Lord is good, right? Suddenly, right in his picture, he told me like, in his picture, right, he got a mind, he got a mind of like a people say, hey, take the sample and try lah. What was the harm? Try lah. See, see, see. You you don't need to pay me any money. You just taste and then see. So so that day, right, he told his friend, the, the friend who preached to him for many years, like, he told his friend, say, how do I taste and see God? Then, then the friend said, "Hey, what? Seriously, uh, I preached to you for so many years. You don't want to accept my 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 uh invitation. Now this guy, this guy, you never see before. He he preached to you. Suddenly, uh, you want to taste God? You too much, uh. Okay, so so and then anyway, that one was was kind of funny story, yeah. Uh. So after that, right, my 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 dad's friend, uh um, uh, Uncle Yap, uh, Uncle Yap Kiming, he 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 actually he actually said, actually you just need to pray. Let me help you pray. 
but you must understand four things. So you don't pray for the sake of praying. The four things is this. Number one, God loves you. So there is a God and God loves you. So there's a creator and God loves you. So, so, so during this prayer, I'll pray for you all based on this. And then when you accept, accept that God love, loves you, second thing is right, God wants you to go to a beautiful, perfect place. But we are imperfect. I mean, as humans, we are all, all imperfect. So you must acknowledge the fact that I'm imperfect. I cannot reach there myself. Now, actually, I want to tell you guys a very honest truth. The gift of receiving God in your life right, is not entirely free. Let me tell you what is the price to pay. The price to pay is your pride. The price to pay is your pride. If you think that you can achieve everything on your own, you don't need anyone to help you, don't need God, right? Then this, this is called pride. Lah. So you must put down a pride and say, yes, I'm imperfect. I need help from you, God. I need help for you to bring me to a, a, a better place, a perfect place, which is heaven. So number three, right, is you, you acknowledge. So number one, God is good. Number two is you're imperfect. Number three is God knows that you're imperfect. That's why he sent his son to actually breach the imperfectness. When you're imperfect, you sin. I mean, when we do bad things, we got, got to pay a price. The son pay a price. So you must acknowledge the son pay a price. And number four, you accept him as your savior. You say, I accept that he paid the fine for me. Now. So for example, you, you cannot summon, you, you need to park your car, you got summon, you need to pay the fine, right? Someone pay for you already. You can say, no need, I can pay myself. That's called pride. Lah. Or you say, thank you very much. All you need to say is, thank you very much for paying the price. So, so my, my dad actually say, okay, so, sounds fair. I mean, nothing, nothing to lose. I'm going to taste and see. So after, after we pray the prayer, right, what is going to happen is this, nothing is going to happen because it is a gift for you. But what is happening is, after that, I encourage you guys, every day just pray for something. Pray for a miracle. Like what Rash mentioned, if you pray for a miracle, you taste and see. If, if, if you pray and then nothing happened, then okay, now, whatever we say is fake, now, right? But you lose nothing, right? But what if it's true? What if a miracle comes true and then things start to move in your life? Have faith you pray, and then you see what happens, okay? So, yes, this is four spiritual laws. Thank you, Joshua. So, I, I'm not pastor, okay? Uh, I'm not pastor, Sean. I, I'm just a normal guy. In fact, in fact, I, I'm still learning a lot. I'm seriously still learning. Okay, so, so uh, shall, shall we pray together? I just want you guys to know the context. Okay, so uh, if you bow your, bow your head, close your eyes, let me pray for you guys. All you need to do is to listen to the words and just repeat and say it to God, okay? Let's pray together. This is a prayer of salvation. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner and I'm imperfect and I need your help. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. I would like to accept Jesus as my savior to pay the price that I cannot pay on my own strength. So thank you for coming into my life. I pray that you will show me miracles this week. You will show me that you are real. I'm going to taste and see to see if you are truly good. And if you are real, if you are good, please show it to me clearly, Lord so that I know that you are here for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen to that. Hey, how many of you want to see some miracles, yo? Oh, it's going to be a miraculous week. I believe it. I receive, bro. I receive, bro. I receive. I want, I want, I want. Why out? <laughs> Let's go for oh, it, man. Pray I'm for me because this week. Pray, pray, pray for God to show you something. I, I can tell you, he will not fear you. Bro, he sh oh man, he shows me every day. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Guys, you got to be hungry. You got to be hungry. Right oh, now, yes. understand. I've understood what it means to be hungry, bro. I'm hungry. I am hungry. So guys, I want to just share with you all some stuff. Sean, absolutely. Guys, how many of you all enjoyed Sean sharing? If you enjoyed Sean sharing, can you please type in love it? Can you please smash some love buttons and share this video as well? Right, share this video and smash some love buttons. And I want to share with you all something very, very, very important, which is basically this. All right. So again, I want you all to actually take a picture of me and Sean. Share our best lessons. Tag us. Tag Sean Sia. Next level with Sean Sia. Tag Six Pack Investor or Rash on Facebook and Sean Sia on Facebook. And five people win a cash prize. It's exactly what it is. And most importantly, my friends, we have an exclusive group. This group was started by these mighty men and women of God. Patrick, Clement, Veronica, um, Richard Tan, myself, Sean, Clement's wife as well. All of us, we started this group. And very, very simply, hey man, you know, if you want to get every single week, we coach you, we guide you, we help you grow your faith. We share messages every single week. And guess what, my friends? You know, you can get, you know, the guidance of all of us, the value. You can't put a value to it. But if I put a value to it, it'll easily be $35,000. But guess what? You'll get it today for completely free. For completely free, 
this group. It's absolutely free to get the guidance of all of us in this one special group. And if you want in, very, very simply, all you got to do is go on to teamrash.com forward slash wealth and go and sign up, all right? So go on to teamrash.com forward slash wealth. And what you'll do, what will happen is that you'll actually get added to this group. So go and sign up right now. The link is right down below, teamrash.com forward slash wealth. Go and sign up right now. All right. And this will really, really, and this will help you in your journey. You know, Sean is an amazing writer. He always writes. He's an author at heart. He's a writer. And you I'm see not, Sean. I'm not. It came from God. It's really not me. My English teacher almost failed me a lot of times. So, so I don't think I'm an amazing writer. Amen. You know, if you see Sean's stuff, you know. He's America. It's, it's, sure. But hey, I completely believe this. You know, what Sean believes is that when he writes, God writes through him, right? When I speak, God speaks through our lips. That's what we all believe. That's what we pray for every single time you correct bro amen yeah that's true i mean there are times that we forget and that's where you start to see things not going well again go back to god he's always there to reach out to you the there's a story about god receiving back whoever that actually runs away and when you want to turn back right he will just bring you back the story Absolutely. of the prodigal son i love that i love that story because i i am i'm a prodigal son many many times and he always received me back yeah fantastic so team rash com forward slash wealth and we'll add you to the group, special exclusive group with all of us combined. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And my friends, I hope you enjoyed this session. I hope you felt inspired by this session. I hope, um, you know, something shifted within you. I know it has, right, guys? How many of you all have been impacted by this session? Type in me, type in yes if you've been impacted by this session, right? So again, if you've been impacted by this session, if you love the sharing by with me and Sean, you know, make sure you tune in every single Sunday. We'll bring you some amazing, amazing speakers. And hey, guys, I hope you enjoy the session and have a fabulous week ahead. May God's goodness chase you down. And like what Sean said, watch out for some tangible miracles. And I want to tell you something. Walk out this week and expect miracles to happen in your life. Expect miracles to happen. And guess what? Stand a good expectation. And I want to share with you this one quote. Very, very simple. I want to end off with this one thing, right? And this one thing comes from the book of Romans, Romans 12, 12. And it says this, Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer, right? Mm -hmm. I really, really love this. Hey, guys, be joyful in hope. And have a miraculous week ahead. I love you. God bless you. And have a fantastic week ahead. I will see you for my morning warriors. I'll see you all tomorrow morning. Take care. God bless. Peace out. Ciao. Peace.